Okay, so let's start working on a challenge. First, I want to navigate to that folder. So again, we're looking for context. We're not looking for the final one. We'll start working the star and we want to set up those components. Let's start with the main one. So navbar JSX. Let's set up the component. Okay, awesome. And then we want to do the same thing for the nav links, as well as the what was the name? I believe I named it user container. Yep, that's the one. So let's continue. I'm going to go with nav links JSX again, create the component. Okay, awesome. And then lastly, we want to create that user container, user container JSX again, set up the component, let's save. Now, remember, we have nested structure. So I want to go to nav bar and first grab the nav links. So in the nav bar, I will add a class here of nav bar just for styles. So I'll say here nav. Let's add the CSS and the class is nav bar. And then in here, inside of the nav bar, I'll have the heading five with some kind of logo. So in this case, I'll go with context API. And then I also want to grab those nav links. So let's set up that component and we want to import them like so. Let's save. Now I don't see anything because of course in here I'm importing the complete one. So now I right away want to go, I guess, to the app JSX and want to grab the nav bar from the star. So again, we'll have two of them. And like I said, I'm not placing anything inside of the container. And since I still want to showcase the final one, I think I'm going to go with the react fragment. So I'm going to go here with star. Then it's not coming from the final. It's actually coming from the star. And then let me set up that fragment first. And then inside of the fragment, we'll place a final. So that's going to be on the top. And then we'll have the star. Let's save it. And I actually get the error because in the final one, I'm looking for context. And of course, at the moment, there is no context. Now, if you're wondering about the folder structure, notice the final one, there's going to be two examples. There's going to be a prop drilling, which is the one that we're going to be working on right now. So if you ever want to compare the results, look for prop drilling, and then there's going to be the context one. So that's going to be our complete example with context API. So in here, I need to change the path where it's not going to be context. It's actually going to be a starter and then nav bar. Let me save it. This should do it. And now notice. So I have context API. That's my logo. And I have the nav links. So up next, I want to go to a nav links and I want to set up the logic as well. And in here, it's going to be a div with nav container. And then inside of it, we'll have an ordered list with nav links and then the user container. So I guess let's start by setting up that div. We do want to add a class of nav container. And then let's go with that unordered list. So this is where we'll display those links. So unordered list, then let's call this nav links. And in here, list item. And I'm just going to go with an href. And for the time being, I'm just going to pass in the hashtag. So we're not going to go anywhere. And then let's copy and paste. And this one is going to be about. Now, after the unordered list, I want to display that user container. So again, let's use the auto imports. Let's grab the user container. And now notice I have the links and I also have the user container. And before we set up any kind of logic in the user container, I want to set up those values in the nav bar. And effectively, I want to set up the state value, the user, and I also want to get the logout one. So let's go over here. Let me close the sidebar. I'm going to go with use state. Like I said, the default value is going to be that object. In my case, the name will be Bob. So name is equal to a Bob. Now, what are we getting back? Well, we want to get back the array user and set user. Now we also want to set up right away what 
the logout one. So const logout. And as far as the function in here, we want to go with set user and set it back to no. And like I said, the main challenge here is to get both user and logout down to a user container. So not just to the nav links, but the user container. How we can do that? Well, since we can only pass props down, we go to a nav links and we come up with a prop. So I'm going to go with user is equal to user and then logout is equal to a logout. Let's save that. Now we want to go to a nav links and essentially, yes, even though we're not using any of these props in the nav links component, we'll have to grab them and we'll have to pass them down to a user container. So it's not an official name, but effectively it's called prop drilling where you're passing through the components that are actually not using those props, because again, we can only pass props down. And as you can see, in this case, we only have what three levels. Basically we have parent, child, and let's call it grandchild, but it's pretty normal in the application to have five, six or whatever levels. So probably your next question is, are we going to have to do that? Well, yeah, if we're not using the state libraries or the context API, which we're going to cover in the following videos, essentially that's the setup. There's no way around it. So let's go back over here. Let's say that I'm going to be looking for a user and a logout and yep, the same deal. I want to go with user is equal to a user. And I probably don't have to say that. Of course you can name this prop differently. But I just find it convenient if we go with the same name. So I'm going to go with logout is equal to a logout. And then in the user container, this is finally where we're going to use them. So again, same deal. We go with user and we want to set up the logout. And now let's work on pretty straightforward JSX where I'm going to set up a div. I'm going to add a class name of user container. And then inside of it, for now, I'm not going to render anything conditionally. I'll just say, hey, grab me the user and also set up a logout button. So I'm going to have a paragraph with hello there, comma. Then let's grab the user and remember the property is name. And then right after the paragraph, we will set up a button. So button class name is going to be a button. And then on click, it's going to be equal to our logout one. So logout here. And as far as the text, let's just go with logout. Let's save. And notice I have Bob. And once I click, I actually set this equal to null. Now, I'm going to have an error here because once the user essentially is null, then of course we cannot access the name property. And in order to avoid this error. Remember, we have the optional chaining where I can say, hey, listen, if the user exists, then grab the name. If not, then just return undefined. So now notice, once I click, hello there, and basically I have nothing there because the value is undefined. And I also want to add to uppercase just to showcase that we can use multiple optional chaining operators. And I'm going to go with two upper and case here. Let's save it. So I'm saying if there's a user, grab the name. If there's a name, then set it to an uppercase. So now once I refresh, notice I have Bob. And then again, once I click, I have nothing. And then lastly, let's set up that conditional rendering where if the user exists, then of course I want to provide the paragraph and the button. However, if there's no user, I simply want to go with please log in. And for that, I'll first set up a paragraph. I'll say, please log in. And then above both of them, for now, I'm going to go with user. And remember, we go with question mark. And then we have two options. So first, if it's true, we return something. And then if it's false. So let's start here by cutting this out. But there's another gotcha. If you copy and paste, there's actually going to be an error. Because notice we have effectively two adjacent elements and we can only return one. Now, the way around that is again, either to set up a div or we can go with a fragment. 
copy and paste and now everything works and then in here since i'm returning only one cut it out and i can set it up so now notice since the user is null i have login or once i have the user i have there hello there bob and once i click now essentially i log out the user now pretty much most of the functionality we already covered at some point during the fundamentals and tutorial like i mentioned already previously the main reason for this challenge was to give you a first-hand experience of such nested structure so if you do have a component a parent and you have the nested structure where you have some kind of child and that child has child on its own and you want to pass something down from the parent to let's say grandparent let's call it that then you will have to pass the props through all of the components even though technically this component is not using any of these two props 